So hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us live on Instagram with Wine Enthusiasts. My name is Lauren Mowry. I'm the travel editor with the magazine. And tonight is our first in our series of Taste in Talks with wine industry luminaries. And we are so thrilled to have our very first one with Christina Mariani May. She is the third generation proprietor of Castello Banfi, an Italian wine company with a brilliant property in Montalcino. And uh, she's gonna tell us a little bit about her wines, her family, her history, and uh, hopefully transport us for the next 30 minutes through wine to Tuscany. So Christina, how are you? Can you just introduce yourself to the audience this evening? Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Christina. Um, I'm with Castello Banfi, and I am just really excited to be here tonight and not doing dirty dishes again. <laughs> I escaped my family of five because I told them I had to do an Instagram live tasting. And they're like, Mom, you don't do Instagram. We do Instagram. <laughs> so Good I thank you very much for all joining. The dishes are out of control these days, aren't they? <laughs> oh my goodness, forget it. Yeah. I'm done. Thank heaven, yeah. fine. That's all I can say. I know, right? We're all, we're all homesteaders these days, so yes, <laughs> trying new yes, things. It's a good hour. Um, yeah, so uh, we, I just want to tell the audience a little bit about the format. We are going to taste through three wines. Uh, we have a white, a red, and a sparkling, but please don't feel left out. Please don't leave us just because you don't have the wines. First of all, they're widely available on the internet. Um, you can check retailers while we're talking if one of these wines is interesting to you. Um, also, it's not just about the wines, it's the opportunity to be transported tonight through wine, which is obviously a great vessel for talking about a place, food of that place, the spirit of a place, also the family from where these wines come from, and that's what Christina's role is this evening. So, uh, I guess we can get started, but we should just address the elephant in the room. Obviously, the world is hurting right now. COVID-19 has put a lot of people in isolation, um, quarantine. Um, our thoughts are with people who are sick. So, you know, I would be remiss not to ask you how your company is and your family are faring through this process and if you, everybody's safe and how you're navigating this. Yeah, thanks, Lauren. I mean, it's just as hard for us as anyone, but fortunately our families both in Italy and here in New York are safe. And yes. when I say family, it's our winery families because we have a broad scope of selling all over the globe. So Italy and New York are really two of the hot spots. So we're yeah. in base in New York and it's been challenging, I gotta admit, but the one blessing is it's pulling us all together better than ever before. I think we're communicating better than ever and we're yep. really coming out and you got to love the Italians for that, you know, I do. They have the heart and soul that they need to share Absolutely. with us New Yorkers because we all need it right now for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of Italy woven into the fabric of New York. So, you know, you, we feel this camaraderie with the country and this uh, sort of this kindred spirit with the, with the Italian people. So, um, and you're, you're in New York now, is that correct? I am, I'm just outside the city, but actually my grandfather started our business on Spring Street in Greenwich Village right. over 101 years ago. Amazing. So he had hard times when he came um, in 1919 because a year later was prohibition. So that was hard times for wine spirits. Right. But he was raised in Italy by his aunt. Her name was Teodolinda Banfi. And Teodolinda was an amazing historical figure in the history of the Vatican because she was the first woman, Lauren, who wasn't a nun to be able to live within the Vatican. And she ran the entire household for Pope Pius XI. Wow. And she raised my grandfather. So she taught him all about wine, food, hospitality, um, which robe to wear, whether it was red or white <laughs> or white or red. Yeah. And she taught my grandfather and he immigrated to America and opened up an importing house on Spring Street in Greenwich Village, named exactly. after the aunt he loved. Spring Street, uh, I, I grew, well, not grow, I lived the last 20 years around that area. So I have, I have strong memories of Spring Street. I live not far from there, just out of Little Italy when I first moved to New York, so. Uh, uh, so you know the spirit, good food. And good I know the spirit. <laughs> um, and what's it like right now running a global company with three teenagers? <laughs> you know, that's always been a tough one. The teenagers are tough. Um, yeah. Well, what, what are their ages? They're uh, 17, 15, and 13. This is how crazy the COVID, the coronavirus is. I forget wow. my children's ages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. But one's excited to go off to college, but a senior who's missing his senior spring. 
And the next one was in boarding school. You wanted to go and he's home. And um, the youngest one is 13. So wow. they're all enjoying puzzles and talking about good fancy wines because that's the way they were raised. And, and you, you were raised in a wine family. What was that like? You know, it's it's been fun. It's, a, it's like we are gypsies. And that's what's weird right now because I grew up traveling back and forth from Italy where my father built a winery in Tuscany in 1978. So you can actually see it here. And it is- And I just, so I just threw up the photo of the gorgeous hills in Tuscany. Um, it's such a special place. So, so viewers can have a yeah, sense so of what the landscape's like. So we want to bring you there right now because this is our mini escape from the task force hearings um, and after dinner dishes. So we're bringing you yeah. to Southern Tuscany to Castello Banfi, and it's in a town of Montalcino. And Montalcino is just south of Siena and in between uh, Rome and Florence. And we have there about 7,100 hectares of land. So okay. it's, uh, hectares, I'm sorry, acres. I, acres, I, that's okay. one, speaking, I think in hectares, hectares too sometimes. You can do the math. <laughs> yeah. It's 7,100 acres. So that was created from scratch in 1978 by my father. And actually the size of the estate is the size of the island of Manhattan. So you can imagine. It's, it's that big. Large. Wow. But actually only one third of it is planted to vineyards, Lauren. So it's like a constellation of single vineyards all throughout. And okay. the rest, we're very proud that it's truly a sustainable agricultural estate. Yeah. So we have the highest ratio of forests to cultivation in all of Italy. So that's really important to us because we want to preserve the environment, sustain the natural resources and the outdoors right. that there were. And it's apropos as yesterday was Earth Day, so um, <laughs> we got every, every day it. should no, be Earth Day, but it. you know, <laughs> um, it's, it's true. So, and you see the wild boars coming out, yeah. you know, they're showing all the animals running all through the streets of Australia. So, in Tuscany, our issue is the chinghiale, which are the wild boars that France, which are <laughs> delicious to eat for meat eaters, right? <laughs> so good. Not so easy to cook at home, though. I don't know how right, to right, find right. it at your shop and stop or Publix, but <laughs> well, that's, that's the famous pasta uh, it, with the chingali. Is it is R remind me that it, what pappardelle usually, right? They do, they do. Yeah, and Dolcino, they do a pasta called pinchi, which is a hand rolled pasta that's kind of like a thick spaghetti, and they put it with the sauce of the chingali, and they serve it with the uh, chianti or with the brunello di Montalcino. That sounds delicious. Well, we should probably get into the wine. Speaking oh. of wine, um, just to remind the audience, uh, whoever is joining us now, we're speaking with Christina Mariani May. She's the third generation proprietor of Banffy. And we are tasting, um, I'll just show you guys the bottles and then we'll get into the first wine. We're tasting first the San Angelo, which yep. is a Pinot Grigio. Then we will be doing a Chianti Classico Reserva. Got it. And then we're ending with bubbles as all days, these days should be ended with bubbles. So we'll be doing that for our tasting. So um, let's move to our white wine first. So and let me just throw that up on the screen. Um, maybe we just have a quick sip of it because I just opened it a few minutes ago. And well, I, I have to say, part. go ahead. What? This is the best part of opening it. I know. Right? <laughs> I don't need the corkscrew. <laughs> I, I have to say, I, when I see a screw top, I reach for it first. I, I've gotten so lazy. <laughs> you know, especially now, I don't think twice. It's I like, know. Oh, I, 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 when I saw that, I was like, oh, perfect. I don't have to twerk my arm. Right. So this is our, um, Lauren, this is our San Angelo Pinot Grigio. And okay. San Angelo, not only is it beautiful in its screw cap um, during these impatient times when all we seem to have is time around the house, but... Actually, San Angelo is quite beautiful because it's 100% Tuscan Pinot Grigio. And that's the only 100% pure Tuscan Pinot Grigio that comes here into America. And at Castello Banfi in Tuscany, we were one of the first to plant this varietal. And what okay. makes it kind of so unique, it's Tuscany has a much warmer climate than right. the north. Than what we normally north. find up north, right? Right. So, so Those wines north, are like a little more steely and neutral. And this has a lot of character to it. A lot more tropical fruit and yeah. lushness and pineapple and um, roundness, mm. which it's I delicious. love because it's yeah. kind of yummy, you know? It's yeah. 
Now that you have made me open this this evening, it might be gone. <laughs> no, I have to tell you, I waited to have mine here, but I, I could barely wait. I was opening that screw cap right away. But this is San Angelo, and that's what I love about it. It's IGT Toscana, and it brings us right to that warmth and that sun and those cypress trees. Yeah, I can, I can taste Tuscany in this. Uh, we have a question from the audience, so let me see. Uh, oh, well, here's a great question. Um, let me throw that up on the screen for everybody. Karen Jennings Sullivan wants to know why is San Angelo so aromatic, which it is. I mean, it just pops from the glass when you. It does. And I think that fruit comes from the tropical sun. So it's okay. the, not the tropical, but the tropical fruit, I should say, comes from the Tuscan sun. Mm -hmm. So you're really baking in that fruit sweetness yeah. into the grapes. And you're getting a lot less acidity compared to other Pinot Grigios, which yeah. Sometimes say it's more in a little watery, a little washed out. Yeah, yeah, Where yeah. One, you get it in the nose. And that's what I love about it. Because if you like Pinot Grigio, it just almost takes you to the next level, like a Vermentino or, or a oh, Chardonnay. Yeah. I know yeah. it's hard. So, you know, it, it is a re reminiscent of Vermentino. And that salt, a little bit of that salinity, that saltiness, that actually, even if it is a bit lower acid, it still has a refreshing sort of hint of, saline and I feel like that is always a nice full foil against riper tropical flavor so um nailed this wine <laughs> yeah right and chilled yeah. obviously but put it back on the screw cap and um get to your puzzle or put those kids to bed early <laughs> if that's possible <laughs> um now let's just talk about a little bit about food pairings what would you what would you do with this wine um just because of the people who aren't drinking this wine we yes. don't want to leave them out so let's talk a little bit Italian food and even sure. we can even talk pantry cooking since that's the that's the boat we find ourselves in. <laughs> so pantry cooking. Okay, so let me start. But I didn't prepare you for that, so don't don't worry if you don't have a. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am the worst cook. I am spoiled <laughs> by traveling a lot, and I am forced now to have my wine with pizza over and over again. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing. This wine, the San Angelo, nothing's better. First of all, as an aperitif. So I pair this perfectly with the task force of COVID-19 when Fauci <laughs> comes on the TV. And Nora O'Donnell, she's my favorite. So okay. <laughs> this is kind of, I would have this as an aperitif. And the yeah. wonderful thing about San Angelo is that it's ripe enough and heavy enough that it can go into the meal. You, yeah. know, you don't yep. have to just sip it by itself. You can then bring it into whatever you're having, salad, pasta, Right. You know, it's really quite a simple, forward, yet rich wine. At yeah. The yeah, I mean, and a lot of us are eating pasta right now. So uh, I imagine this with like pine nuts and um, golden raisins as one, and fennel maybe as one pasta dish. And um, I can see this with tuna dishes and some fresh onion and uh, maybe fresh cut tomato as well. Perfect. Um, kind of fresh and springy. I mean, it's yeah. springtime. Yeah. By the way, where is spring? <laughs> <laughs> Where is spring? It's not here in New York. It's so not I here. It's you, been really cold. in Tuscany. So we just have um, to all get back there. Yeah, I know. It, it seems like it'll be a while, but it'll be there. This will pass and we will be back. I'm sure of it. So yes, um, no, no doubt. There's no yeah. doubt. And we welcome cool. having everybody there because, you know, in the meantime, wine is all about escape. And that's why we love wine enthusiasts. Because <laughs> for this moment, when we drink this wine, we're escaping to Tuscany. Yeah. Um, and to friendships just for a few minutes. Well, if you're inviting everybody there, just know you have about several hundred people that <laughs> take you up on that offer right now. So, <laughs> well, we have a hotel there too called Castello Banfield of Borgo, and um, I've actually I've actually stayed there. It's right. magic. It's it's a fairy tale, really. It's a it's a beautiful place. I wish I'd known you at the time. <laughs> I know. Well, you know me now, and so do all. I know you now. So yeah. <laughs> you gotta come stay. It's just fourteen luxury suites, but yeah. we also have the restaurants and the glass museum of Balsamaria, and it's really it's a place where people come to plan your next trip to Italy to take a respite. Oh, absolutely! Florence and Rome, and come to the countryside, learn about wine, drink lots of good wine, and not have to worry about getting in your rented Fiat with a GPS, and you yes. can't find your way back. Yeah. To and, and you have a fantastic restaurant on site, so you could just we stay do. there, not worry about drinking and driving, open up all that great library stuff. <laughs> and and we also we grow Durham wheat. We have our own biodynamic wheat. We make our own honey on our property. 
um, the olive oil. So it really, you can really taste all the local or right. actually all the beautiful right. produce right there. Right. Well, we should probably move to the next wine. So mm -hmm. let's uh, throw that one up. The Chianti. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what? Do you want me to go ahead and pour it and talk about it, Laura? Uh, yep, I'm just trying to throw it up on the screen here and then let me get my other glass. I'm a little bit of a, a glassware nerd. <laughs> so I have all sorts of glasses, like the burgundy glass, then the sort of baller glass. And um, oh, yeah, good. I wasn't sure what I wanted to pour it in tonight. So I thought I would try both. <laughs> okay. And it's my one did. little wine luxury is to have a lot of glass. Pardon? No, it's kind of dark in here, so I hope everyone can see. Oh, yeah. Um, we've got this glass. And I'm going to try it. this glass and see, and see how the aromas change. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? It's Chianti Classico Reserva. So and um, I think also it would be interesting to tell people a little bit about what the difference between Classico and straight Chianti is after you tell us a little bit about the wine. So. Sure. So let me um, sip into the wine, which is the mm. best part. Ooh. There's lovely cherry notes in that. Cherry, cherry, plum, yeah. kind of like ripe fruit, dark berries, but also an earthiness a little bit, which yeah. I love about Chianti's because Chianti's are not meant to be fruit bombs, you know? They're yeah. really meant to be wines that can be kind of savored and, and have a long lasting nose to them. And that's because the predominant grape in Chianti is Sangiovese. Right. So, Sangiovese, Lauren, as you know, really only grows in a few places around the world that it's very special. Um, it's a very finicky, difficult grape to grow. And in Tuscany, Sangiovese has this gorgeous natural home. So if you grow Sangiovese in the Chianti district, which is kind of the greater district um, surrounding Florence and Siena, you can call it um, a Chianti. But now here we're having the Chianti Classico Reserva. So in order to be called a Chianti Classico, it has to come from the Classico region, which is a, actually a very small region just south of Florence. And then if the grapes are grown in the Classico region, which we in the greater Chianti, they can be blended up to 15% with other grapes and they right. can be called Chianti Classico. To be a reserva, it has to be aged at least an additional two years. So that means it's a longer growing wine. Right. Where we are in Montalcino at Castello Banti, we're actually south of Chianti Classico. So we were actually one of the only wineries we are outside the Classico district in Montalcino in southern Tuscany that can produce and bottle our Chianti Classico reserva. So we grow the grapes in the Classico region. Oh, and wow. Okay. And down from our own vineyards to our winery in Montalcino. Okay. And we're grandfathered in to call it a Chianti Classico Reserva. Right, this right. 2015, too, which is way... This is, this is stinging. It's, it's delicious. The acid is on point. It's well integrated with the fruit character. And it's, it's vibrant. It's really fresh. Yeah, that's what I love about it. They dance on your palate. Yeah. You know, the, the it's for 2015. You know, Five, five years of age on this wine. So um, we have a few questions and I don't yes. want to ignore our viewers. So let's see if they have anything to ask you. Let me. Um, okay, we have one from, I think you just answered this, but maybe we just want to clarify the difference between the Reserva and the Classico was what you were talking about, the oak aging, but. Correct. More okay. oak aging, um, really, that's the difference. And okay. for us also, a better selection of the grapes. I thought I was going to ask you, if you take a different care or selection in the, in the fruit that you put into that wine? Exactly. So yeah. we, we take the better grapes and we put them into the Reserva. Because also, remember, those are the grapes that can stand up to aging in wood. The rest take a little, you know, they need that young fruit. Whereas these grapes, and we blend it also with some Cabernet Sauvignon. Right. Reserva. And what I love about this wine is you can find it. You know, it's one of those yep. wines that are out there and it's an affordable luxury. You know, all these wines you're tasting are below $20. And, you know, I think it's really important today that you want to follow a good producer and you want credibility in a wine and you want lushness. But, 
you also want affordability. Let's be yeah. honest. We're all watching every single dollar that's going out. So exactly. That's what I love about Chianti, the Benthic Chianti, is you know you're going to get a good bottle every time you open yeah. it. And that's why I put it in my fancy glass. Yeah. <laughs> it, it elevates the uh, the. Uh, it elevates the evening without costing much money, so. <laughs> exactly, right? You know, it's um, like you don't have to break the bank. And these wines even taste better the next day. So I love opening up. Yeah, for sure. The next day, too. Um, Chianti also, I mean, Americans have a great love affair with Chianti. Going back to the early straw basket Chianti days and the red sauce joints in Manhattan or all over the country. Um, you know, that was a different Chianti than what people are producing today, for sure. But it, it's, it brings comfort to people. You know, when I think about what do I want to eat in a mid midweek meal and what do I want to drink, the, the fruit of Chianti with like a homemade pizza, very simple toppings, mo fresh mozzarella, um, that, that's what I gravitate towards. And I think right now in times where people are stressed and feeling uncertain about their future, Chianti is one of those wines we can really latch onto and and feel good about so <laughs> and the alcohols are generally not too high as well so <laughs> exactly we we still actually have a line that makes the chianti in the fiasco which is the basket and that's how my grandfather first yeah yeah years ago in new york so here we are 100 years later in Tachentani, right so <laughs> um well, i think we have a few more questions so let's see what people are asking um all right, one about, oh, well, here, let's go with Greg. He wants to know what your favorite food pairing is with Chianti, speaking of food. I mean, speaking of food, I'm just getting a little more light in here. Um, speaking of food, what I would pair with this is like, make your own pizza, you know? Yeah. Like, bake your own crust, bake your own pizza, put it in the oven, a little bit of prosciutto, anything kind of salty, I mm -hmm. think be amazing with this. Salty proteins. We've been making yeah. a lot of stews still because okay. summer hasn't quite, or spring yeah. kicked in here for right. us. But I think spring, um, the kind of the barbecue also, I love the cherry in Chianti because it could really take a little bit of spice, you know? Yeah. So if you put a little bit of something with a kick in it, like have a barbecue contest, that's a fun idea with your friends who has the best rib sauce, pair it with the Chianti and see which one can really stand up to the fruitiness and the acidity that you yeah. see in a yeah. good preserve. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to cook outside at some point. <laughs> oh, you can go out there with the parka. <laughs> Well, I think we should move to the last wine because, okay. man, time is actually flying by. <laughs> this is fun. Um, I don't want to go. Don't tell I me know. I'm going, like back inside with my children. So <laughs> I'm a goof, but I also brought a few glasses out <laughs> just to try. Me too. Um, you know, don't, yep, different glasses, different styles. A lot of people pour bubbles in a traditional champagne flute. Uh, there are now flutes that have a little bit wider body or wider base but still focus the aromas at the top. So you get all that fruit, but you still have the uh, column, which is what gives the bubbles a chance to, to rise up and look pretty. And then I have just more of a traditional all-purpose white wine glass. Um, I tend to like to drink bubbles from something with a little bigger, um, a bigger base because you get more aromatics that way, but it's like Goldilocks or something for everybody. So what do you drink your Rosa Regale with? Oh, oh so Rosa Regale. Okay, I'm going to pop it here because I was going to open it before. I'm like, you know, to hell with it. We have to celebrate the little moments now. Yep. So here goes mine. Um, that's my favorite sound in the world. Um, I drink, well, this is a really special wine, Rosa Regale, first of all, because it is so unique. If you can see it, I'm going to put some Ooh. white light behind it. Wow, but that's so can, aromatic, too. It, Wow. Let that me pops. put this behind just so you can see the color of this wine. Yeah. The light in here isn't even doing it justice because it's really like I can hold it up. <laughs> um, this wine t smells like strawberries. Yeah. Raspberries. It is so fragrant. The grape is actually called a bracchetto. It's a bracchetto mm -hmm. grape Piemonte up in Piedmont. And what I love about this wine is that while it has a really high residual sugar, it mm -hmm. also has an excellent balance of acidity. 
So you taste it, and it's like almost like seductive and sweet and lush, but it's not overly cloying, you know, Lauren? Yeah. It wakes up at the end. It has a beautiful color. Um, I know, I wish you could. It reminds me of the color of love. <laughs> oh, we all need a lot of We love. all need a little of that right now in our lives. <laughs> a color of a hug. Yeah, color of a hug. Cheers. <laughs> <Bless>. <laughs> Uh, what would you what would you what would you drink this with uh, as a you know obviously a pair of tea maybe with some dessert but what other kinds of dishes can you see because there is some residual sugar in it and yeah, I think people sometimes. do struggle sometimes to know what else to pair those things with as far as savory foods or yeah so I mean obviously this goes with chocolate you know anytime you yeah. have acidity and fruitiness sweetness it's chocolate but what I love this with is spicy yeah so I think a spicy you you, you have Think of sweet wines paired with spices. So I think of like right. a Thai, a pad Thai, a takeout pad Thai. Anything with like a cut through it. Yeah. Um, spicy or sushi, if you can find it nowadays, which I miss it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but this is what I would do. I would do it like a Szechuan. Zip your food up and try pairing it with something sweet. And you're really going to have like a savory, um, sweet exploration. I think it's, it's one of the most unique. What, what is the story of this wine, actually? Do you... So Rosa Regale actually has a beautiful story because it's one of the oldest historic wines in all of Italy. Coming from Piemonte, legend has it that Cleopatra used to drink the Burchetto grape. And when really? this Caesar <laughs> came and fell in love with her, her favorite sweet grape, and it's a very musty, it's a family of the Moscato or the Muscat mm -hmm. grape. Yeah. Um, she would drink that, and supposedly legend has it that they created a romance over this wine. So what I love is that the Italians have a legend and story for everything. Yeah, they <laughs> <You do. know? laughs> And only they would say that, you know, Cleopatra and Julius Caesar would fall in love over it. <laughs> I'd ask you just to look, your, look at your significant other on the couch and still fall yeah, in love. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> But that's really, I mean, this wine is one of the most historic wines. It's a DOCG wine from Italy. So it's one of the most historic wines of all of Italy. And, and can you tell the audience what DOCG means in mm -hmm. case they don't know the, what quality tier sure. that implies? So it means denomination of controlled origin and guaranteed. So it's in Italian wine laws, there's different tiers of how you can designate a wine. The most historic regions are the ones that have the DOCG, the Denomination of Controlled Origin and Guaranteed. A lot of people think that Garantita means it's guaranteed quality. Mm -hmm. That's not true. What it means is it's guaranteed to be grown in the region and following the Italian or now EU regulations yeah. must adhere to that historic district. Okay. So there are, there's a... Um... There's more regulation and uh, it's, it's pretty much the highest tier, quality tier though in Italy, right? So if you see DOCG on the label, um, which actually people can look for, for example, on this Chianti Classico, you can see right here on the label. Let me drop that actually. Um, look at it at the top on the capsule and that will guarantee that it has been uh, approved for the so. Correct. But I also have to say, when we're doing education tonight in Tuscany, it doesn't guarantee quality of the right. highest in all of Italy, because if you think of it, the super Tuscans, as they're called, right, were, right, right, were right. wines that fell outside the DOCG. Of course, so yeah. were blended wines that aren't typical of the region, but it still means you can have the highest quality. Like, we right, make right. what's called today, and it's yeah. all for every day, you know? Yeah. It's like, Twelve dollars, it, but it's Sangiovese Cabernet and Merlot because you just have to drink it and have fun with it. Because Sangiovese and a lot of the grapes, Nebbiolo from Italy, can be very challenging. Right. So if you go outside, you just can't call it a DOCG. Right. Right. Um, I think we have another question, so we are wrapping up shortly. Let's see what we have. Um, oh, we have a few questions, so I'm going to pick through these. <laughs> Uh, here's a nice one. 
Is great Banffy wine the reason you look so great? Oh, in oh, 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 that must be my son who posted that. I told him to do that. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, they're too cute. I'm, I'm going to be 50 I mean, are you going to give us a real answer to that? <laughs> of course. No, I'm going to be 50 next year. And you know what makes you look really good? Drinking lots of Banffy wine and talking to nice people. Because I love everyone that wine enthusiast. Yeah. So you guys have been the best for educating and giving back to everybody in this wine community, especially now, Lauren, reaching out, being kind. You know, our wine and restaurant and food community is very close-knit. And Absolutely. there's no better company than Adam and Sybil Strong, who own your company. And everybody who feeds down from it have hearts full of gold. And... You know, that's why we love what we do, because it's about the people, not just good wines. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, but you know, I found you guys working in the wine business. I, I feel like I found my people, you know, it, it, yeah. there's a generosity and authenticity and a heartfeltness that uh, people in the wine business and the hospitality business have. So it's it, it gives as much as you it gives back as much as you give to it. And I'm I'm. Great thrilled job. that we got to spend the evening together um, for our first taste and talk on wine enthusiasts Instagram live on Wednesday, Thursday night, actually. All the days run together. <laughs> yes, I know, but at least tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, but I, I don't even know. I do know you got <laughs> me in a dress, though, and I. Blew my I washed hair my up. hair! <laughs> Um, unfortunately, it is now 8.01 and we are officially 30 minutes in and ready to conclude. So, uh, chin chin. Chin chin. Come to Castello Banfi. Thank you. you are brave enough to get on a plane with me. Thank you, our <laughs> guest. In the and meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, give back to your community and hug everyone you can with safety and reason. But be grateful for all we have. And I'm grateful for you, Lauren, and wine. Yeah, I'm grateful to you, too. Thank you so much. And for our audience that's interested in these wines, remember, you can find them online. Uh, just go to your favorite retailer. Uh, let's see. Do I have favorite retailer or wine.com if you want to look for these wines? So thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have a great evening. And we'll see you at the next occasion. And I'll see you in Tuscany. <laughs> Ciao, Lauren. Bye. Ciao.